Nou, Martijn, Jelle, what are you doing with Kickstarter? I saw you coming, uh, I saw you on Facebook, there was this video coming along. What was it about? Uh, there was the, uh, a big crowdfunding event in uh, Amsterdam, in the arena, uh, and I interviewed uh, some guys from Kickstarter. And? Yeah, interesting, yeah. Okay, what was it about? What was the context or the content? Uh, we're talking about uh, the future of Kickstarter and the way they're also busy with their uh, growth in Europe uh, because they just opened also uh, for Germany and for France and they're also active of course in the Netherlands for a year now. So I was very curious about, uh, about that and also about their future plans. I was very surprised because I also had the interview with Indiegogo in, uh, in, in San Francisco and they say okay because Indiegogo and Kickstarter they're doing uh, almost the same with uh, uh, pre-sales and donation crowdfunding and Indiegogo they say okay as uh, at the moment it is possible to do equity based crowdfunding in uh, the US we're going to do it and I was really surprised about that because I think equity based crowdfunding and lending crowdfunding is something completely different than donation and pre-sales crowdfunding and the guys of Kickstarter say no we're going to stick the, to our, our core and I think that's just pretty really pre-sales and donation and I think that's really good because uh, it's a completely different ball game and there are also some other big uh, uh, players in the world. Uh, one of them already went IPO. Uh, so you can really make a difference uh, by doing that. So I think it's really good that they're focusing on what they're doing right now and being the best in it uh, globally. Will they outbeat Indiegogo, you think, by choosing this direction? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think so, but it's it's pretty really, uh, because you see there really a a a uh, competition uh, to uh, to get to Europe mm. because it's a really interesting market. It's also a really uh, 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 not really an, an easy market because all of, all of all the languages, uh, but they all got their own strategy. But in the end, they're all also opening offices in uh, different countries. So, but I think when they stick to the core, they will win. Yeah, and. I spoke to a couple of people at the Next Web conference, and one of them was um, uh, Nicholas Brossen of BlaBlaCar. You spoke to his co-founder, yeah, um, and uh, the founder of Prezi, and Jitse Groen as well, a Dutch entrepreneur from uh, Thuisbezorgd and Just Eat. And they all said it's bullshit. I'm sorry, it's BS to see Europe as uh, a bunch of different small com uh, countries. You can just see it as a whole. And yes, there's a difference in languages and maybe you need a couple of people locally um, mm. but you can if you see Europe if you approach Europe as one country then you can uh, then, you, then, you, then you can scale through the whole of Europe oh, and I think that that's bullshit because uh, it, it depends on what you're doing uh, like when you do ride sharing with uh, like blah blah car yeah it's quite easy to get in other countries because it not really has to do much with uh, re uh, regulations because it really adapts to the existing regulations mm -hmm. but uh, when you go to like uh, with crowdfunding uh, it is with different regulations so yeah when you it's, do it's, equity it's, but also when you do pre-sale yeah, it's it's uh, it's 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 harder than than uh, when you're copying a ride sharing platform uh, to 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 other countries. It's it's uh, and also the competition is also different because uh, there's with crowdfunding there's a really huge competition in every country. In the Netherlands, you've got about I think forty or fifty crowdfunding platforms, and mm. this is only in Netherlands. Uh, but we don't really got serious ride sharing platforms, so it's no. it's it's not that easy. I think okay, it's, it really depends on what you're doing. Kickstarter and Indiegogo are like the crowdfunding platforms of the world. At Everybody in the Netherlands also knows them, especially Kickstarter, I think. Mm -hmm. So when they come to Europe and come to the Netherlands or France, or I can imagine that they can quite easily uh, get a piece of the market. No, because in the end, the uh, transaction is really locally. So uh, yeah, here, uh, because we have ideal. No, uh, not only the, the payment system, uh, that's also an issue because you can't pay with Ideal on Kickstarter. And it's a really, I also saw yeah. that with my own Indiegogo campaign, it's mm -hmm. really a high treasure for people to, to participate. But in the end, um, we go start crowdfunding. The benefit of being a global player is not that it is big because in the end, most of the money for the average projects, of course, there are some special like yeah. travels, but for the average projects, most of the money uh, comes from your friends, family and fools. Mm -hmm. And that are people that you already know. And most of the, of the time, they are living in your own country. So the benefits of, of really getting to a global platform is not that big as, as many people think. I think we can discuss this for hours, but we uh, <laughs> agreed on beforehand that we should try to get five minutes and then we exactly have 10 seconds left from now on. <laughs> so let's uh, uh, get to the next point. Um, you have this laptop traveling around the world. Yeah. 
Yeah, it started uh, this week. It's <laughs> yeah. a it's a Microsoft. our laptop. It's a it's a it's, it's a tablet laptop. So, it's, yeah. it's a Microsoft Surface Pro. Uh, so they're also the partner of the uh, virtual expedition. Yeah. So a f- cool flight case uh, with the uh, laptop inside and some other stuff is traveling the world. Uh, every week I go to interview one collaborative economy entrepreneur uh, mm-hmm. using Skype. Um, in the, uh, before I start, I have no idea who, who I'm going to talk to because the entrepreneur gives a suitcase to the next one. So I ask him or her, okay, can you give a suitcase to the, to the entrepreneur mm-hmm. uh, in the creative economy that, that inspire you most? And the week after the interview, I have the interview with somebody and, and I'm calling to the laptop and I think, okay, who are you? So that's uh, the idea. So to really get spontaneous uh, interviews with, with many different, so it's, in on one side, uh, I have control because I say, okay, you have to give to a founder. It's got to be in Netherlands the f- first six months. Uh, but uh, the other side, I have no control. I have no control at all. Who will be the first one? Uh, the first one was uh, Barco. Okay. It's a uh, boat sharing platform. So yeah. they like the Airbnb of boats. Okay. Uh, we had the interview last uh, Tuesday. Uh, because then the first interview, uh, and uh, you didn't know that one. Yeah, yeah, I knew because I picked okay. them as the first. Okay, but now they're going to give letter to another organization. I have no idea who nice. I'm going to talk to. So next Tuesday at nine thirty, uh, I'm going to do the interview. Yeah. Cool. Very curious. Me too. Yeah. How many interviews are you going to do in the next? How long? Uh, a year, so every laptop, uh, so every week one interview, so it's mm-hmm. uh, 50 or 52 interviews, and there's also going to start a second laptop uh, in a couple of months <coughs> yeah, in another country. So, cool, looking forward to it. Your third point, what's that? I can't read it. We share fest. <laughs> we share <laughs> fest. Oh, yeah. in Paris, yeah, you've uh, been, Paris. You, Paris, you've been there a year ago, yeah, uh, in the very beginning of your crowd expedition, wasn't it? Yeah, it, uh, it was the, after the interview at Snapcar, it was the first uh, thing we did with Crowd Expedition. Yeah, we talked about it in, I think, episode two then for, of this Probably, podcast, yeah. uh, so, uh, somewhere around episode two. What are you going to do differently and where are you going to focus on this um, this time? Uh, last year I was the, 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 the newbie of the Clarity of Economies because, of course, I had quite some crowdfunding experience but no experience like in the sharing economy and crowdsourcing so it was all new for me it was just like a big candy store oh what's happening over here and now i have done about one of his interviews so now there's also quite some knowledge uh, on board and network so most people who are there uh, I, I already know and also many of them i have all, uh, already interviewed uh, but i'm going to be there as uh, as a visitor and as press so i'm also going to do some interviews uh, like with Michel Bowens, he's uh, the founder of the uh, Peer to Peer Foundation. He sounds living, Dutch. Uh, Belgium. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but he's living in Chiang Mai. Okay. So he's he's here in Europe for for a couple of a couple of days. Okay. He's a really interesting guy, and also quite some other people. And yeah, I'm going to to attend to 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 some some workshops also about because I'm also now focusing on the. Um, uh, dilemmas in the collaborative economy about the responsibility of platforms and uh, labor in the collaborative economy and there are also some sessions uh, about uh, about that cool yeah looking forward to it again yeah me too keep me posted i will and them as well i will <laughs> <laughs> ah.